But they're coming to see the moon shade out the sun is really what they're trying to do. It's a cool event to be sure. It reminds me that God set the stars in motion. God set the sun. God set the moon. God set the, he spoke the universe in motion. He did it all. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that um, God has revealed himself through nature. And this is just one more way. He's just sending a message. Hey, listen, I'm up here. I really got the thing going. It's amazing. And I did it. And that's how awesome God is. And uh, he did it with meticulous care, with meticulous order. They say that animals are going to be really confused. And I'm looking forward to finding out what my cats are going to do. That's going to be very fun to watch. You know, some hotels, they say, are charging 800 bucks per night. If I was there, I'd charge 1600 the fools. <laughs> What's wrong with these numbskulls? Let's start really making money. But the eclipse reminds us that there's really something big out there. God's eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen since the creation of the world. Paul continues, though, and he says, Though they knew God, he's talking about everybody, really, they did not glorify him as God. Instead, their thinking became nonsense, and their senseless minds were dark. And that said, in this dark world, many people might not know it, but they're looking for illumination. They really are. That's why everybody's flooding there. They're looking for something spectacular, something awesome. Really, they're looking for light. People are. They don't know it, but they are. They love to hide in darkness. And Jesus said that we are the light of the world. Not the light, but we reflect the light. We're not to shade out the sun, which is what the moon is going to do. We're not to be uh, those kind of moonies. But we're to be like the moon that reflects. <laughs> Bada bum bum. I, I just came to me right then. I thought that was not bad. <laughs> but we're to be a, a light to a whole bunch more people. And you know, that is why we're doing the basketball tournament um, in the Highlands September 9th. That's why we're doing it. You know, we can go all the way to. Um, you know, San Francisco, we can go to Uganda, we can go to, you know, L.A., we can go to Peru, all great things. We believe in all that, you know. But right here in Longview, Washington, we have people to touch. And I encourage you to come and be a part of it. And just and you say, well, I don't know what to do. Just show up. We'll find something for you to do. Just talk to people. Talk to kids. You know, do something. Give them a hot dog. Do something. Just come and uh, Sam is going to be organizing a time where we're going to invite the whole neighborhood to come. And it's going to be games. It's going to be, uh, you know, bouncy houses. It's going to be fun, really, for the whole family, plus a basketball tournament. It really was successful last year. And we learned last year that it doesn't have to be all day either. It's a four hour shot, it's 10 to 2, and uh, rather than 9 in the morning till 5 at night. And hopefully, when the band starts playing, the rain won't hit. I'm going to have to remember not seeing raindrops keep falling on my head. Maybe that's what caused the whole problem. I don't know. Now, here's the funny thing. People are coming from all over to watch this eclipse. Do you know how long it lasts? Two and a half minutes. Okay? It better be a good two and a half minutes. That's all I got to say. And it will be. But it reminds me that life on earth, we're just vapor. We're here we're gone. That's it. And then what are we left behind? And what, what are we going to take with us? Well, we all know we get to take our golf clubs uh, to heaven and we get to take our cars and houses. And that's nice. How many? No, that's. <laughs> yeah, that'll be really great. You get to take your wallet, though. You get to take your money, and that's nice. Uh, no, you don't get to do that. Some people spend their entire lives just looking for what they can see and taste and feel in the right now. They're carnal. Sometimes as Christians, we're carnal too. But so many of you are making an investment toward the future. You realize that our only two days really matter. As Martin Luther once said, this day and that day. That's it. And we are now pursuing the Triangle Theater. We're pursuing it all out. I just want you to know, this, tu this last Tuesday, I signed the official document that says in the next, you know, we have 90 days now to raise our money. What's nice is we've said that a few times before, but uh, it, they would, we would send something to them. They'd send something back. They'd change it. We'd change it. We'd, finally, we agreed. And so now 
It's like, oh, man, here we go. The good news is we've had some money to raise some dough. And guess what? We're now at $102,000. Yeah, yeah. The thing, and so it's like all of a sudden, hey, maybe this could happen. You know? And, um, and so there we go. And so now it's time to start rocking and rolling. And some of you have some ideas on how to raise money. And we might, I think we're going to have a silent auction one of these days here soon. So think about all the Cadillacs and things you could, you could uh, auction off. Now, I want, you to, I want to show you, and this is so awesome, that right here in our house we have Shauna Chapin, who is among the most gifted people. I don't know. It's amazing what she can do. And she loves to speak in front of people. No, she doesn't. But uh, uh, I just want to show you uh, f oh, a minute and 15. There, here it is, right here. area for all kids. There's our youth room, and they can use other rooms as well. There's the upper level. There's two stories to this thing. There's our offices. We're actually going to have real offices now. It's really neat. And uh, <clears throat> we have some now, but it's going to be better even. And there's our youth room. It's going to be, I mean, ours is the bomb now, but it's really going to be the ultimate. You see, there's Commerce Avenue, and there's Washington Way. Give you some idea of what it really looks like. How about that? And you have little, uh, in, in your folders that you got, you have a, a, a look both in the front and in the back what the church um, will look like, and all it takes is money. Some of you wonder, I'm going to say this really quick, really fast, and I'm going to bring our, our children's pastor, Gary, fresh off of camp that was absolutely outstanding. It was outstanding, and I'm going to preach again starting next week. But I'll tell you what's nice about this is we have a deep bullpen, and we've had Steve White uh, preach. We had uh, Greg. We had Sam, and now we have Gary. You get to hear from a lot of good people, many of whom were pastors in their own right uh, back in the day. So what are we, why are we pursuing this? Well, one reason is the, uh, that building is 60 years newer than this one. Much better security. Here we have seven or eight entrances. There they have one entrance, one exit. And I'm telling you, we have security people here, and it's kind of us. <laughs> they're running all over the place. They're on walkie-talkies. And uh, because you just never know in this day and age, right? And I want to make sure you guys are taken care of. Yeah, we really do. We don't want anybody to get hurt from some fool walking off the street. There's one check-in for all children's church, all of it. 11-year-olds on down, one check-in area as opposed to the fun serpentine that everybody gets to follow. And that's a lot of fun, and we all know that. One area right there, bada boom, bada bing, larger uh, sanctuary and, and uh, buck, yeah. Buck, I, uh, I, I always said, man, if we're going to move, I want to have at least 600 seats. And it was 588, and then Buck reminded me, have we got 600 seats? So I went to our architect, and I said, can we get more seats? And he goes, well, I don't think... Well, let me look at it. And he did. 631. That's a good number. I'm very excited. It's a 75% increase over what we have now. And we hope to do a lot with this building. Concerts, plays, bring the muscle men back. Perhaps community events as well. Might even do a partnership with some people and do, do different things. Maybe even the college. You don't know. We're going to have an elevator. So you can, yeah, so you can go play in the elevator all day. Uh, Shelly, that'll be a lot of fun for you and Stan, um, you know. And uh, we hope to have coffee there back in the, you know, an espresso and a chai, chai lattes. That would be so good. And I know the Lord is going to provide for me on that one. <clears throat> and we want to sell books, too. We'd like to sell a few books, not every book that you've ever wanted. But we hope to, hope to have some Bibles we want to sell and some good Christian books. It's right in the heart of downtown. Uh, great parking. 
Uh, we have two great meeting rooms for Bible studies over there, extra youth rooms, a baby cry room, which would be nice. Yeah, and uh, we love babies here. We're going to have better offices. We're going to have a conference room, more rooms for ministry, and maybe best of all, and, and this might get you, if this doesn't get you excited, I don't know what will. We're going to have HVAC all over the whole thing. That means air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm just, you know, rather than turning to your neighbor and going to keep them cool, we'll actually have something there, and that'll be great. And, and clearly we feel, feel like it's a sign from the Lord to go there because it's right next to Heavenly Donuts. And so uh, we are really sure now, and it's a lot of money, but that's the way the kingdom of God is. You know that? God could, if he wanted to, snap his fingers and build a temple. He could. But that's never how he did it. He told his people, go build one. <laughs> he could have built an ark just by snapping his fingers, but he, he didn't. In fact, he gave... Uh, uh, Noah, quite a bit of time, some 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years to build it. He, he's, he's, he's all right waiting. He wanted him to build, build it. He wants us to build it. That's just how he is. And if you've been contemplating putting some shekels in the building fund, I would certainly encourage you to do so. Thanks for making some of you, so many of you already have, and we need a whole bunch more to consider doing it. Thanks for making a good investment. Um. All right. Now, this morning, I want to introduce uh, a guy who's been with us uh, almost as long as I've been here, I think. Maybe it may be as long, and uh, it's been a while. And he's been our faithful children's church guy. He also does other things, too. He's also uh, doing our men's ministry. If you've come to Men's Breakfast, you know that. And he's been involved in the Conquer series for men. Um, he's also... Uh, a pretty good counselor, and uh, and then also, as it turns out, he's really good at, at fantasy football, which is all important, as we all know. <laughs> anyway, let's welcome Gary Chapin. All right. All right. Anybody else really tired and really excited about kids camp from last year? Oh, just, oh, maybe just me. Yeah, Jennifer, thank you very much. Where's Seth at? Seth, right there. Seth Austin, thank you. Chris, Chris here? Yeah, around. Hey, uh, kids camp report. We had uh, 32 kids go and uh, nine counselors. Our youth were the counselors over kids. It ties in our, our kids to um, cool, um, cool teenagers like Seth and uh, just had an a awesome time. We... Uh, we had uh, worship, and um, Chris talked about, you know, how much God loves us and how he created us. And, and, uh, and Thursday night, um, you know when you're leading worship and then, you know, the sound's going out, but the sound coming back is actually louder than the sound going out? That's how it was Thursday night. It was awesome. Chris gave the altar call, and four kids um, decided to accept the Lord Jesus. Uh, just awesome time. Thank you so much for everyone who, without asking, just gave a scholarship for a kid to go. Um, we had um, 17 scholarships um, that went, kids who couldn't afford it to go. Awesome time. Um, if if you're excited uh, about the future of fathers, the the yeah, um, the result is right here. I mean, the proof is right here. I am super excited about the future of Father's House and and Longview, hanging out with your kids. Your kids are awesome. One thing though that um, that gets me excited is that it shows kind of what kind of church we are when you look at the kids, and uh, and I think looking at your kids and teenagers. Um, we're a very healthy, very healthy church. Yeah. <laughs> very healthy church. And I went to a conference one time and the speaker said, um, what do you need to do to, uh, to have a healthy church grow? What do you need to do? Nothing. You don't have to do anything to make a healthy church grow. A healthy church is going to grow. What you need to do is keep the unhealthy things away from it, right? 
You need to have the unhealthy things get away with it. And one of the things um, that I'd like to concentrate on today, it's not the only thing, but the one thing I'd like to concentrate on today um, is anger. Anger, controlling our anger. Now, before I go on, there's, there's kind of two kinds of anger, you know, and uh, there's the righteous anger, right? You know, righteous anger. And I thought, well, you know, God, there's, there's righteous anger, you know, and, and he reminded me that my things that I get righteously anger about um, is about 0.01% of the things that I get ang angry about. And it's actually less than that, but I'm horrible with numbers. And so, and so I'm not talking about the righteous anger. I'm talking about the 99.99% of the times that I just get angry because things don't go my way. Okay? Anybody else there? Yeah. Okay. You know, Ken, he might be, you know, 25% righteous anger. But, you know, we're, we're yeah. Um, and, and there's an anger that we just lash out at people, right? And then there's an anger where we are kind of passive aggressive and just don't, don't help people, and I'm talking about both of them today, both of those, okay? Got some quotes for you, and uh, Ava Mendez, actress, says, I don't usually lose my temper, but if I get angry, it's true. I'm scary. Ambrose Beer says, speak when you are angry, and you will make the best speech you will ever regret. Bruce Lee, ha ha, says, a quick temper will make a fool of you soon enough. My favorite one, Chuck Tilton, said, anger means that someone owes you. I love that. I love that because it frames it in the right way. He took it from Andy Stanley's book, uh, Enemies of the Heart. Anger says that somebody or something owes you. I ask uh, you guys and my 15,000 children's pastors, um, what makes you angry? And this is what they said. Number three thing that makes people angry? Gossip. Gossip makes people angry. Okay? Okay. Now, we go, you know, kind of from the high spiritual thing to a little bit lower on the spiritual scale here for number two. Number two thing people said made them angry? People who don't use their blinkers. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Note to self, use blinker. Yep. Okay. Uh, number one thing, actually, that made people angry, lying or people that lie. Okay, all right, I'm in the right room, though. Speaking of people who don't use their blinkers, they uh, took a look at when we drive, and nearly 80%, 80% of U.S. drivers express significant anger, aggression, or road rage behind the wheel at least once in the past year. And the other 20% lied. Yeah, that's the, how it goes. The most alarming findings suggest that approximately 8 million U.S. drivers engaged in extreme examples of road rage, including, including purposely ramming another vehicle or getting out of the car to confront, confront another driver. Wow. The study ends with this statement. Far too many drivers are losing themselves in the heat of the moment and lashing out in ways that could be deadly. Many of you remember the Incredible Hulk, the TV show. Dr. Bruce Banner would turn into this undefeatable green monster and he would say this all the time. Mr. McGee! Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Here's the reality is that Bruce Banner isn't the only one with the anger problem. Inside each of us is a choice that we make to become hulkish or control our anger. 
Some of you thought you were working for Bruce Banner, but then you turned in the report wrong and you found out, nope, it was the Hulk. Some of us are godly church people. Oh, man, we're godly church people. But you, when we're it, at church, but when you catch us at the wrong time, at the wrong place, we become the Hulk. Anger isn't a new problem from the beginning of time. It's been a choice um, that us humans have made. Way back in the beginning of time, Genesis chapter 4, if you want to look it up later. Genesis chapter 4, and of course Eve has Cain, and uh, Cain goes to go goes to give his offering and uh, it's it's not the best that he has which is a lesson all to itself and Abel comes and gives the very best that he can and verse 6 God comes down to visit him uh, verse 6 and he says then the Lord said to Cain why are you so angry And why are you looking down? Verse 7. Will not your face be happy if you do well? If you do not do well, sin is waiting to destroy you. Its desire is to rule over you. But you must rule over it. Anger isn't new, but according to the Lord, we must rule over it. Okay, or it will rule over us. Why are we so angry? What's underneath it? I love this picture of the iceberg, the anger iceberg. Because anger is at the very top of it. It's what we see. Oh man, they're angry. But underneath it is a whole list of things that could be the real problem frustration, insecurity, being hurt, lied to, okay? Why are we so angry? What's underneath it? Who or what do you think owes you? Reminds me of a story of a, a young gal, and uh, she was just tired of being made fun of, and uh, she had the light yellow hair, and she just decided enough is enough. And so she made herself a brunette, and uh, after she had been driving a while, she saw some sheep in the, in the field and thought, oh, how cute. So she pulled over and th she said to the farmer, hey, if I can guess how many sheep you have, can I have one? And the farmer said, yeah, for sure. And so the, the brunette who had lighter color hair behind it said, um... 157. And the farmer said, yeah. So she went and she grabbed one and the farmer said, huh, now if I can guess your real ha hair color, can I have my dog back? <laughs> All jokes aside, even bad ones, that's right. If we find ourselves angry about getting snubbed in social media or being cut off in traffic or going unrecognized for work or having an idea shut down or feeling unappreciated by our spouse, maybe the problem is that we love ourselves too much. Anger is when uh, we, someone owes us something and we are a society like this. Dr. Banner. Now might be a really good time for you to get angry. That's my secret, Captain. I'm always angry. <laughs> We are angry all the time because it's not that somebody owes us something. It's that everybody owes us everything. I had some time this week uh, in between getting ready for camp and, and doing all that. And so I, I took a couple hours and uh, actually saved you some time. 
and uh, made a list of what the, what the uh, world and God actually owes me. So you can start with this list, and then you can build your own list. Are you ready? <laughs> Nothing. Because of his grace and mercy, he gives us things, but he doesn't owe us anything. The world doesn't owe us anything. It doesn't owe me a good parking spot. It doesn't owe me fair treatment. It doesn't owe me a smile. It doesn't owe me respect. The world and the people owe me nothing, and God owes me nothing. In studying for this today, I read an article about five signs your child is entitled. Okay, very interesting. And I want to read the last, last paragraph. Children who feel in their core that the world owes them for the simple fact that they are themselves are suffering from a severe case of entitlement. But are they really to blame? After all, they've spent their childhood being told they are special, they are winners, and that they deserve to be happy. Why wouldn't they come to the conclusion that everyone they meet exists to meet their whims? The whole source and the start of this sermon came from this verse right here. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, um, but bring them up in the discipline, huh, that's interesting, and instruction of the Lord. Now that word provoke, it comes from a Greek word that's all Greek to me, um, but it means really uh, rouse someone to anger, to provoke in a way that really pushes someone's buttons to really get to them in an up close and personal way. It's closest to our word in rage. Okay, it's closest to our word in rage. And that word rage comes from the Latin word, which it comes from rabies. Huh, that was free. Put your, put your wallet away, Alan. That's for free, man. Yeah, no. Isn't that, isn't that a look at our society, just that they're just ready to get somebody? And I don't know who, but I, somebody owes me something. Back to the animal kingdom, a rattlesnake, if, cor if cornered, will sometimes become so angry, it will bite itself. If that's not a picture of our society, I don't know what is. I don't know who's going to get it, but someone is. I don't want to be part of the generation that keeps provo provoking our kids to anger. I want to get it out, right? I don't want to have it anymore. So what can we do about it? What can we do about it? Number one. It's not about me. In 2 AD, a guy, I can't pronounce his name, um, codified geocentrism, which is very simply, talking about the eclipse and all that, says that the earth is the center of our solar system. Okay, in 2 AD. And the moon and the sun all rotate around the earth. And they've been studying, and if that's true, then you know this planet should be here at this time and all that stuff. In 1543, Copernicus um, found out it wasn't the Earth that was the center of the solar system. It was the sun, right? So for you math majors out there, that's 1,541 years that they were wrong. Couldn't they just figure out? Couldn't they just be like, well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, boom, there's the truth. But in the same way, in negative 1 AD, Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, deny himself, and take up his cross daily and follow me. 2,000 years, and we still haven't gotten it. When we get angry at someone or an event or a situation that's happening, I wonder if it's a test for us 
whether we're going to put God in the center of the situation or we're going to put us in the center of it. I wonder if it's a test. It's not about me. Philippians 2.21 says, For they all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. Wrote that 2,000 years ago, and it's still true today. Number two thing about anger is that anger is to be controlled. Okay, back to Cain and Abel. Ephesians 4.26 says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And then verse 27 says, And give no opportunity to the devil. Okay? There is a way to control it. There is a way to control anger. Is that I, I was an alcoholic, and, and uh -huh. I drank a lot for, okay. for years. And, and my, my lying and, and stealing and everything that I was doing, it was as a direct result. Now, Mrs. Hicks, you have a lovely voice, but, but I minute. don't want to hear listen. it now. I, let I, I, let it you. go. Your Honor, let first of all, she, she likes to fight. Because, see, the problem is she's not used to nobody being able to talk to her, rebuttal her, and say something to her. Joe, you see that foot? <laughs> Working. It's, it's You're going to dig a hole <laughs> underneath my witness stand. That's what I'm talking about. Your Honor, you told me do, not to. Do, 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 do you have a problem with your anger? Yes, and, and I'm going to anger management class. That's right. And, and, I'm seeing, and I'm seeing a psychologist as well. And I have exercises. That's what the humming is coming from. Oh, that's what yes. the humming is for. It's an exercise so that to is keep to me calm. calm. You yes, to when keep you me calm. are excited, mm -hmm. excited in a state of agitation. Mm -hmm. Your Honor. Your Honor. Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Your Honor. Now, how much singing did you do during the course of your marriage? Well, I, I, I sing all the time. I, I'm a singer. But I just started this singing while he's talking, talking. to keep me calm. Keep you cool. The solution to anger isn't humming. I don't want I don't want us going out. Man, that father's house church, they hum all the time. What no, 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 no. The way to control to control our anger, one word is self. Self. Self control, we'll skip uh, Matt. Self control says choosing to do what's right when I feel like doing wrong, okay? There's a way to control our anger, and it's not what this wife did. The husband said, man, it w when you get angry, uh, I, I don't see it. What happens? And the wife said, well, I, I go to clean the toilet. And the husband says, what? You go to clean the toilet? How does that help with anger? And uh, she said, why well, use your toothbrush? Again, again, not the way to control anger. The way to control anger is self, self-control. Now, some of you are thinking, God, I'm ready to get this anger out of me. Go! <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to happen. He's not going to do that because he has already given us the tools to deal with our own anger. The Holy Spirit working in our lives, okay, absolutely, and self-control, us controlling ourselves. Well, you know what they did? Yep, I do know what they did, but we still have to control ourselves, what is God saying to you about your anger? Number three, know your triggers. They say that uh, women are mostly triggered by close relationships, okay? When a family member or friend uh, disappoints them, um, they get angry. Men are more likely angered uh, by strangers or objects that don't work for them. Yeah, we don't need to raise hands there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Children's anger tends to be about goals, about, about getting things, toys and stuff, okay? 
But these triggers by themselves aren't enough to get us angry. There's a mental component in which we evaluate whether anger is a justifiable response. In a split second, we take in who's to blame, how harmful the trigger is, and whether the action was avoidable, and whether anger will even be more useful in this situation. Okay? What are some of your triggers? A person? An event? Okay? Somebody, something somebody says. What are your triggers? I know my trigger, uh, a little one, I'm not going to confess everything today, but one of my triggers uh, is when I watch baseball fights on YouTube. Oh, man. And that pitcher throws that ball 95 miles an hour and just hits the guy, and then, and then the guy doesn't do anything, right? And he just starts walking to first base, and what does the pitcher do? Go over to him and starts talking to him. Oh, man. Oh, man. And I think, oh, I found that guy, you know. Sometimes it's music, okay? Now, that B-flat chord that Chuck played today, that doesn't have any, any spiritual significance at all, okay? But there are spiritual forces that are attached to the words and the, and the, the visual things that we watch, okay? Okay? There's a story about a guy who uh, went to work, and uh, he was working his graveyard shift, and suddenly he, he looked at his boss and thought, I'm going to kill that guy. It was, it was different because his boss was the nicest guy ever. And uh, went, he went home, and he slept on his, the couch in the living room and went to, went to work the next day and thought, that guy, I'm going to get rid of him came home, found out that when he was taking a nap on the sofa at 3 p.m., that the soap opera had a storyline that, um, that the guy was going to kill his boss. We are half asleep, but our minds are catching everything that comes our way. Okay? Be careful what's around us. The more you surround yourself with the Holy Spirit stuff, um, the more you'll grow in the Spirit. The more we know about what makes, you, makes us angry and make, up, uh, make our mind up before the situation happens, the better we're going to be. Surround ourselves with good stuff. Look towards the good. Sometimes, how many know that the good is harder to find than the bad? Yeah, very hard. Sometimes you have to dig a little bit, and sometimes you have to, to really um, try to find the good. To end today, there's a story uh, of John D. Rec Rockefeller who owned Standard Oil. And one day, one day an executive uh, did a deal and lost the company $2 million in a day. And all the, all, all the other executives heard about it. And thought, I'm not talking to him today. Uh-uh, no thanks. And everyone avoided John D. Rockefeller except this one executive who had an appointment with him. And, uh, and he went in and uh, Rockefeller said, well, I, I guess you know what happened today. And the guy said, oh, yeah, I know. And, uh, and, he, and he said, uh, he looked over at his desk and uh, on his desk was a list and John D. Rockefeller had made a list of everything good that this guy had done. Everything good that he had done. And all the times that he saved the company way more than the two million he had lost. And he decided to keep them. Sometimes the good is hidden. And sometimes there's a story that we don't know about. Let's, let's be people who are making lists of the good that people have done so that we can be the lights of this world.
be slow to anger. Slow to anger. Be the light of this world. We're going to pray today. Thanks, God, that you give us the tools uh, for anger. And uh, we want to use them. We want to be your lights. We want to be slow to anger. And we want to see the good in everyone. Even if we have to dig, God, we want to be um, the ones who see the good. We want to know our triggers. And we want to make up our mind um, beforehand what to do about it. We thank you and we pray um, that we just have a great day today. And you and your spirit surround ourselves with your, um, your spiritual food. And uh, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Thanks, guys. Yeah.